Hey guys, this is the crew from EPI. Today we're going to install a clutch kit and show you guys how to do a quick install. Um, this is a 1000 Renegade 2012 model with 30 inch silverbacks. We're going to put our mudder kit in it and see how it works. Different models will vary a little bit, but obviously first you got to get to the clutch cover. Some models you have to might remove this plastic panel here. Sometimes you might have to take off the footrest. But once you get that, it's pretty much getting all these main bolts around these clutch covers and removing those. Once we get those out, we'll, we'll come back and show you what we have. Okay, here's the clutch covers off. This is going to be your primary clutch or the drive clutch. This is your secondary clutch or the driven clutch. Um, and to get these off, on the primary, what you want to do is remove the center bolt. But when you do that, you want to have somebody hold tension on this because it's going to be spring loaded. When you pull this bolt off, the, the spring tension will push it off with it. If for some reason you pull this bolt off and the clutch is stuck there, usually if you just give it a little tap with a rubber hammer, um, it'll just pop itself off. But just kind of hang on to it. Um, same thing on the secondary clutch. This is also spring loaded on the Can-Ams. So what you want to do is in an EPI clutch kit, we'll give you a bolt like this. You'll thread this in to one of the threaded holes. There's usually three holes. One will be threaded. Thread it in there. That'll open up the clutch. Let the belt tension be loose. And then when you have that loose, hold tension on, on the clutch again and pull the center bolt up. This one's going to be stiffer than your primary clutch. So you know, just have somebody there to help you, that's the best way to do it. Um, once you get those bolts off, the clutches will come off, set them on a clean surface, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so now we pulled out the, prim the primary clutch bolt, and here we're going to pull it off. And all you got to do is grab the, the front part and the back half, because it will slide apart, and just slowly pull it off. Sometimes your primary spring will come off with it, sometimes it'll stay on there. Um, just want to set that off on a clean surface. And then one other thing, we have our bolt in the clutch now, so that's why the belt's nice and loose. The one thing you got to watch when you pull these apart is this is the spring cup here, and there's also a bearing here. You want to keep those on the machine. There's springs underneath those that if you pull that off, or if you when you when you pull the belt off, if that whole thing comes off, they'll come out and they'll lock up that bearing, and then you have to mess around with putting it back together. So most time for most clutch work, you can leave it on there. Don't mess with it; you'd be good to go. So now we got the primary clutch sitting on the on the bench. What you want to do is just nice and slow, just pull this out. Um, it's always a good idea to take a marker and mark a spot where you're taking them apart. Like I like just to make this, or like a mark or an X, whatever you want to do. That way you know exactly where it came apart as, and you can line everything up square again. So you pull this out nice and slow. Set it off to the side, and then this will reveal the the six weights on there. Um, Take the nut off this bolt that's holding the weight in and you just slide it out and pull out the weight. Now what you'll see is there's little washers, one on each side of every weight in here. And so you just got to make sure when you put everything back together, you put those in again, one on each side. And when you go to put them in, some of our kits will have all six of the same weights. Some of them will have a split weight. The numbers will always be stamped on the end of them. This one is a 34. And this one has a 36 on it. What you want to do is when you put them in, if it if they has different numbers on them, go every other one so you know they stay balanced all the way around. So this is a 34, this one would be 34, and this one would be 34. Um, when you go to put them back in, it's pretty nice and simple. Um, normally, before you put everything back in, it'd be a good time to blow everything out, clean it off real good. Um, but what I like to do is to start start your bolt in there. Put the one washer on, slide the new weight in, put the bolt about three quarters of the way through the weight, and usually if you just slide, slide the bolt over, that other washer will fall into place, and sometimes you got to spin it or wiggle it up and down, but it should go through, and there you are. Put the nut on, you're good to go. Do the same thing for the rest of the other weights. Okay, so again we got the, the bolt threaded in here, so the clutch is opened up. That makes the belt loose. And what you want to do is you can either pull the belt off when you pull the clutch off, or I like to do it when the clutch is on the machine, and that way you can just hold this at the same time so you don't pull that off. And all you gotta do is pull that off like that and pull it through. The other thing is whenever you put a belt back on, is they'll either have an arrow or the wording, and you always want to put it so the arrow is going the right direction, usually it's going towards the front of the machine. And if there's no arrow, you want to put it so you can read the writing from left to right. So 
Um, but then from here, what we want to do is pull the center bolt off. Again, hold tension on here while you do that. Once you pull that off, the spring tension is going to allow the spring and the clutch and the helix all to come out of the clutch. And we'll show you that. Okay, so now the bolt is off. We still got spring tension on it. It'll slide out and kind of pop itself off. Just kind of watch and be careful behind it. Might be kind of hard to see. But here's the back side of the clutch. And then normally your spring and helix will usually stay on here. The biggest key is when you're putting this helix back on, make sure that these are all lined up in the grooves and the helix is pushed on all the way as far as it can go. Um, otherwise you'll strip out that helix and you have to go buy a new one. Okay, so now we clean the clutch. We're putting the EPI spring in. Um, the biggest thing to watch here when you put everything in together is see this groove here. The helix has to fit into there. So as you slide down the, on, onto the shaft, make sure you're kind of lining those up because as you assemble it, they have to line up where you can damage the helix or damage the clutch. Um, we have the helix pushed on the shaft. It's lined up on the splines. And what we'll do now is we'll just kind of slide it on. Um, the best thing here is have another person there with you. Have one person push it on, another one thread the bolt in. And we'll try that now. Okay, so now we push it on far enough. We got the bolt probably about halfway threaded in. Not, we, you don't want to go in all the way. What you want to do is once you get it started so it's going to be safely stay on there, thread the bolt into here again and just do it by hand or with a hand ratchet. And as you get tighter, if it all of a sudden stops, that means you're not lined up in the, with the helix with the back of the clutch. So you might have to do is rotate the clutch a little bit and, and you can feel sometimes with your hands back there see where it needs to go. Um, if it's going and the clutch is starting to open up um, as you tighten this, that means you're, you're lined up good enough for it's going to line itself up as you install the rest of the clutch. So then what you want to do is torque the bolt to the factory specs, whatever that is for that machine, and you're good to go. Once you get that part done, um, you can take the belt because your, your, your clutch will be open. And again, making sure you're going the right rotation and the, right, the numbers the right way and then you can stick your belt on the clutch. Um, depending on how loose you got it, it's not really loose on this one right now. And just work it over to that. Again, just being careful when you're messing around with everything that you don't pull that cup off. And then, um, then it's installing the primary clutch. Now we're gonna finish up the primary clutch. Again, you, uh, we made marks on this when we first took it apart. Make sure that's lined up. Make sure all these buttons are on here, none of them falling off. And you just slide it down nice and easy, just like that. Grab the clutch, your clutch spring. You can actually put the clutch spring into the clutch. And then grab your clutch bolt. And again, it's really easy if you have another buddy there to help you do this. But what you want to do is put this on there and just kind of make sure it lines up in that spring cup. And again, have the belt loose so you can make sure the, the clutch is going to go all the way on. And you just kind of slide it on the shaft. Push it on and install the bolt. Torque the bolt to the factory specs once you get it threaded on there a little bit. You can let go of it. As you're tightening the bolt though, when the belt is loose, just kind of hold it up or squeeze it like this. That'll move the clutch or the belt around so the clutch can fully go on. Torque the bolt remove this bolt out that'll allow the, the clutch to fully open and then um, then we're almost there okay we're pretty much at the last step now both bolts are torqued down the belt's still loose because we just pulled the bolt out here so what you want to do is just spin the clutch usually if you spin it backwards it works pretty good and that will reset the belt in a, its neutral position so it's in the correct th spot it's not getting pinched in and not blocking the cover from going on or anything else like that once you do this, it's just a matter of getting the cover back on, putting all your plaques on, and it's ready to ride.